Final Cut Pro really is an awesome editing video application, but it might not click with you until you spend a bit of time customizing and adjusting some of the settings to suit your workflow and preferences specifically. So then you can fully become the Final Cut Pro. So to do that, let's start by talking about audio meters. If you don't see audio meters on the side of your timeline, you can press Shift Command 8 to turn those on and off. And the first time you turn them on, they'll be very wide, so you can just slide them over and make them smaller. Always, always, always have your audio meters turned on when you're editing. Audio is at least half of video, if not like 60% of video. So it's incredibly important that you focus on the audio, even though it seems like the visuals would be the more important part, the audio is really the thing that's gonna make your audience say adios. And there are a few preferences that I recommend you change. So if you go up to Final Cut Pro and click on preferences, we have some basic stuff here in the general settings. The only thing I've changed here is the color correction option. I have mine set to color wheels. And what that means is when I click on the color correction icon in the inspector, it's gonna take me directly to the color wheels rather than the color board or something else. That's just something I prefer to use because I just like the way that the wheels work a little bit better. They work really well for me. Editing. We're not really going to change anything here. Playback, background rendering is very important. If you have a newer computer, like an M1 computer or beyond, you can probably leave that checked and things are gonna work great. If you have an older computer or you're just noticing performance issues, I would recommend unchecking background render. And what that means is Final Cut Pro, when it detects that you've sort of not touched something for a little bit, it's just gonna jump in and render it so that way it's just ready to go. But that takes processing power. So. If your computer's having a hard time dealing with you editing and rendering stuff out, then it's a good idea to turn that off. By default, it's set to start after 0.3 seconds. So that means after you move something and then you sort of sit there for 0.3 seconds, it'll jump in and start rendering it. I like that. You can select your GPU. In most cases with Apple computers, you probably don't have a lot of options. It's sort of just, I can't even click on this. It's just the one the computer has. So. That's the way that works. In the playback options, I only uncheck one item, and that is if a frame drops, stop playback and warn. Dropped frames mean that while you're playing your footage back, the computer sort of stutters a little bit and kind of like skips a frame. It has no effect on the actual project or what the exported version will look like. It can just be kind of annoying. Basically what I'm saying is I don't need Final Cut Pro to stop everything and put up a dialog box that says frames drop during playback, like it's fine. It's fine. Moving over to the import menu, there are a few important things to keep in mind, specifically right here under the files section, you have two options. I have mine set to leave files in place. And what this means is since I have that folder with all of those files on my desktop, those just stay there. I never ever, ever move anything related to a project until that project is done. I don't change the file names, put it in a different folder. It just stays right there. It's permanently there until the project is done. If you have it set to copy files to your library location, then it's basically going to take the file from that folder and create a copy of it in the library. And what that means is you won't be as affected if this folder over here gets moved, but you've now have basically duplicate footage on your drive. So it's going to take up more space. I'm not interested in taking up more space. So I just leave them in place. I don't have it do any of the analyzing or anything like that because I'm a bit of a control freak and I want to do everything myself. And then destinations, this is when you click on the share export icon. These are the places you can share to. A lot of it is just a video file, a video file. But one thing that's really helpful is save current frame. By default, this is not a destination in Final Cut Pro. So you can just click add destination and then you can just drag over save current frame to your menu. And this is great if you wanna export full resolution frames as still images from your videos. If you're someone who does YouTube, this is a very good way to export thumbnail images. The last thing that we change is go up into Final Cut Pro, commands and customize. This is going to bring up all of the keyboard shortcuts within Final Cut Pro. So you can sort of see all of the commands that are there and you can even click up here and see what is there if you press the command key, you sort of have different options. Command plus shift, command plus option. You can sort of see what, what is assigned to what. There's all kinds of shortcuts pre-assigned. There is one really important one that I'm gonna be using probably a thousand times in this project, and it's one that I recommend you change to. And if I scroll down here and go to blade all, where is it, there it is. By default, blade all is set to shift command B, and I wanna change it to S. So here's what that means. It's because it's an S tier 
command. The blade tool is the really important tool that lets you cut things up and chop them up. By default, if you have two clips, and you put the blade tool and you cut one, it's only gonna cut the clip that you've selected. Blade all means if you have a whole bunch of stuff stacked up on your timeline, it's just going to cut through everything all at once. It's really, really helpful when you're editing multi-angle, multi-element projects. So by default, you can do that just by pressing Shift Command B. And so Shift Command B, you're sort of doing this finger yoga tap dancing all over your keyboard. So what I have it set to is just the letter S. If I press S, it will just cut through everything wherever the playhead is, and it's incredibly fast. The way that you create a custom keystroke or key command is you just click on the thing you want to adjust, and then you just type what you want to change. So if I wanted to change this to T, I would just press T. It's telling me that T is already assigned to something, which probably will happen because everything is pretty much assigned to everything. And if you just click reassign, then it will create your new assignment. So in this case, you would just click on blade all, click S, it will tell you S is already assigned, you just click reassign, and then now you have blade all set to S. And then you click save and you're all done. Thank you so much to everyone who helps support my channel through Patreon and YouTube channel memberships. And if you like this video, check out my video editing course, Rough Cut to Final Cut, where I share literally everything I know about editing in Final Cut Pro.